Uh, good evening, councillors, and welcome to this, the Finance and Operations Committee uh, for the 5th of May. Um, I'd like to start with an acknowledgement. We acknowledge traditional custodians of this land and pay respects to their elders and the elders from other communities who may be here today. We also acknowledge all other people who have contributed to the rich diversities of this country. Um, I'll call for apologies. Yes. Apologies. Uh, confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting has been circulated. I could have someone move, Councillor Davis and Councillor Ben Anthony. All those in favour? Carried. Uh, the governance matters. This committee meeting is conducted in accordance with the Local Government Act 2020 and the Vanilla Royal City Council Governance Rules 2020. Uh, in accordance with the Government Rules 2024 6.4, meetings of Council will be audio recorded and made available for public access. Uh, councillors are reminded of their behaviour at the Council meeting and disclosures of conflict of interest in accordance with the Local Government Act 2020. The Councillor must declare any conflict of interest uh, pursuant to Section 130 of the Act. Is there any councillor who wishes to declare a conflict of interest? Councillor Gunnar, I think. Thank you, Chair. I declare for item three and four. I am the treasurer of Rominda Community House. Uh, for item numbers three and four, community sponsorship and annual grants program. When this comes up, I will work out. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you very much. Thank you. No. Um, business. Um, public submissions on any matter? No. And we'll move into item two, which is the finance report for the third quarter and 31 March 2021. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. Um, The finance result for the end of March is a positive result. Uh, we have a surplus of $6.5 million uh, at this time of year, which is favourable. The budget surplus at this time of year was only to be 2.9, so we're um, 3.6 ahead of that, which is great. The report outlines throughout pages... 10, 11, 12 and 13, the variances from the budget and also the uh, forecast result for the end of the year. Uh, I will just talk to some of the significant items that I think um, many of us are interested in, which of course is the increased operating grants and the increased capital grants, um, which have resulted in us having a, a higher surplus in the current year. We have uh, also experienced a, a higher rates and charges return, which we will all be aware of, has been attributed to the um, increased number of houses and properties being developed in Vanilla at the moment, resulting in supplementary valuations. We're still waiting on a couple of uh, challenges to the valuations um, in the commercial area, so, I haven't increased the forecast result for the rates and charges for the end of the year because I'm waiting to see what the outcome of those um, challenges to valuations, which would mean a drop in um, rate revenue that we've currently recognised. We've had a good recovery uh, with user charges, statutory fees and fines. Again, I contribute that to the um, building and planning permit fees, um, which have really gone well over the last few months, surprisingly, um, from when I forecasted the budget at the beginning of the year. Grants are outlined with numerous variances because we have picked up a number of um, operating grants and they're outlined in point four on page 10. So we've had increases in our reoccurring grants and also in our non-reoccurring grants. Uh, and obviously the, the large $410,000 worth of drought community program funding in operating grants is uh, a great plus. That was a million dollar grant program, so the the other 590 is actually in capital projects, which appears in a different part of the report. Looking through the, um, the items, we've picked up a, a number of of large grants and we're hoping for them to be expended by the end of the year. Um, the capital grants, which is 
point six. Uh, obviously, we, we picked up the Benalla Splash Park, three hundred eighty thousand. The rural ICT support package for a hundred thousand. We've had a timing variance with the um, e waste and transfer station grant but uh, we expect to obtain those by the end of the year. And then we've also picked up the um, Vanilla Foreshore and, and Splash Park Building Works package for $2 million. <coughs> the Local Roads and Community Infrastructure Fund, $970,000, which didn't require any contribution from Council, was a fantastic inclusion in our um, books this year. And um, as I mentioned before, the, the drought money is the $510,000 has come in as a capital grant non-recurring. <coughs> Working through to operating expenses, we have had a favourable result at the moment with operating total expenses are 23 million compared to 24 million, 24.6 budgeted. Mainly that's because of um, depreciation and because we had a number of items in the capex program in the prior year that were not finalized due to COVID they didn't come through in the current year I expect it will pick up a number of depreciation costs in the current year when we do the final draw up of working work in progress items coming out of capital um, expenditure and having to be depreciated for the part of the year that we were able to attribute them to use. Overall um, we are having a net operating surplus rather than a deficit in the current year, which is mainly attributed to the um, grant income and also the improved income on rates and user fees or statutory fees. I'm happy to take any questions on, on any of them. But overall, uh, I'll have a look at page 14 for the Capital Works Program. At the end of March, we had a budget of, of five million expect, expected to be spent, and we've actually spent 4.7 million, which I think is a pretty good result in the current environment. And we're forecasting about an $8.2 million capital works outcome. There are a number of ups and downs um, due to grants, but um, overall, that's a really big spend across. <coughs> The community, I, I haven't been where we've gone over six million dollars before in that capital works, so that's a big output in a small town. Uh, if anyone would like to ask questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you, Kathy. Any questions from Council? Council Claridge. Uh, on page 13, Kathy, uh -huh. item number 12, which is the um, community hall insurance. The new council probably aren't quite aware of what's happened, but we've rolled it over now. I think this is the second time. Are we looking at doing something about that? The hall insurance is for halls that aren't owned by council. So in an accounting term, it's a contribution because we, we can't take over control of someone else's asset. If it burns down, we can't be ins insuring someone else's asset. But we actually provide the cash to pay the bill for their insurance. So we call it a community contribution. Um, it's $20,000. Uh, we've, we've done it in the current year. We've proposed it in the draft budget for next year. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's up to council whether or not we continue to provide that, but the community would find it hard to find $20,000, I think. Just yes. Tonight, or well, this is probably not the, the time to address it, but I think it's something that when we go out to community halls, that's what we started to do last time, so it's probably a good time to continue this conversation with them, because that can be noted somewhere. So you would it's probably more relevant to um, the major people performance report who's actually in charge of okay. insurance and um, perhaps noted there. Councillor Davis. Uh, Kelly, just for clarification, uh, capital grants, um, item number six on page 11. We've got Benalla Foreshore and Splash Park in at the two. And then you've got Benalla Splash Park grants in at, um, at the two point three eight. That's extra funding, is it? Uh, Do you just want to explain that so it's just to clarify? The first one was for the initial um, 
Vanilla Splash Park, and then there have been, which was the actual items that splashed the water, and then we have included um, additional playground equipment, um, shelters, yeah. um, access to come through from the, the proposed new car park um, as well. Um, Mr CEO is probably more across it than me in the actual delivery. Look, I, th I think that explains it. I think I've, it's got, thanks to the answer, it's got that covered. Um, um, just another point, um, it's probably not the right venue to venue it, but um, I will. Um, congratulations on the five, five million dollars capital expenditure projects this year. My concern is next year we've got 8.3 and with what's going on in the community at the moment as far as um, cost increases and something, we could end up looking at 10% increase. So we could end up at actually those projects costing us another eight or nine hundred or nearly a million dollars. Is there, are we taking that into account? I think the challenge with any grant project is you, you get a grant for a set amount. The challenge is to deliver for the dollars that you receive. So you have to scope your projects and, and if the tender goes out to the community for a, a price and it comes in and it's 10% higher, well, then you have to readjust your scoping of your project to fall within the grant dollar that we receive. And, and it's a challenge for contract administrators and it's a challenge for people scoping jobs to put them out. Um, we would all like the biggest and the best, but if we've only got a million dollars, then we can only have a million dollars because unfortunately we don't have the 10% extra to throw in to make it $1.1 million. And so that's really where Mr. Um, Adrian, as I call him, Mr. Assets Infrastructure Management, um, needs to uh, take control of the budget. And, and it will be a challenge because, as, as you're well aware, everything's going up. Mm. And we, we've been given the grants now. The prices will move. So managing that gap is going to be focus that we will look at seriously over the next 12 months. Thanks, Kathy. It looks like you've crossed it anyway. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I have a few clarifications yeah, and perfect. questions. Uh, Kathy, thank you. Uh, looking at note number four in page 10, mm -hmm. operating grants recurring, <clears throat> drought communities program 410 and outdoor eating entertainment grant 250,000. Are they recurring? Does that mean we get it? next year too, is that what it means? Um, recurring, we, it covers two years, the drought community program, it's going over two years, so it won't be recurring in the next year, if you get what I mean, yeah. and the outdoor eating and, and entertainment grant is now going to cover to the next year as well, but, so it's going to be part, part this year, but next year it will be non-recurring for that part of the grant. Um, so it can move from one year to the next year. The non-recurring is when it won't recur in the next year. If yeah. part of it recurs in the occurs in the current year and you're going to use it in the next year, it's, it's called recurring. So, thank you. And yeah, I have a few questions. Yeah. Yeah. Question, yeah. yeah. Uh, from point number five, uh -huh. uh, looking at the operating grants, non-recurring, I noted the explanation... Actually, it doesn't match the difference. It's about $820,000 difference. Uh, you said Victorian grant, working for Victoria, 612 and 425 from the previous year. But actually, the difference is about 1.9 million in operating grants, non recurring. There's about another 820 missing, I think, um, in the note. Or is that, am I reading right? No, you could be. The Working for Victoria grant, the whole grant is 907. We're only taking, we're only recognising 612 in the current year and the balance will go into the next year. The, the um, recognition of income from prior year is 425. So we have just taken that up in the current year as well. The Operating grants non-recurrent, there's a lot of them and I, I didn't put down every single one. I can give you a further breakdown. They are um, in the budget document under the
the grant breakdown in the budget document as well and this page would go on for a lot. Um, we, we receive additional money for um, the COVID with community services and Jane will probably speak to that when she's going through her community services grant later in the um, night that we've got quite a lot of operating grants with COVID for COVID response that um, top up on youth um, community care, um, I think the Australia Day mm -hmm. um, celebrations, we picked up money in there as well. Um, so no, I, I, I don't actually normally highlight every single one because they can be over maternal child care. Smaller ones. Multiples. Thank you. One more follow-up follow question. question. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Uh, from Chris, uh, point seven in page 11, mm -hmm. there are a few grants. i um, interested about the, probably the CEO maybe, other contributions towards environmental projects grant, tobacco monitoring and public open space contribution. Are there any actions happening or what are we doing with that funding? Thank you. I'm happy to take the tobacco. Um, the, t the, the tobacco monitoring is, um, a, it's not a grant, it's a contribution, to, so that's why it's under contributions. It's towards um, monitoring of people going into shops if I'm under the age of 16 and asking for, for smokes, um, for putting up signage mm -hmm. and follow up. Yeah. Oh, is it 18 now? I think so. Okay. Um, follow up for those sorts of things. We receive it every year, but we we aren't short of receiving it, like it's a, a contribution that that industry chooses to put out. So it's not a, a grant as such, it's just a contribution. The public open space contributions are when um, people undertake developments mm -hmm. and they have to take 5% of the value as a public open space contribution and we don't budget for those, mm -hmm. um, but they do end up in our balance sheet as a reserve that we can only use for specific funds. So um, they can go up and down depending upon the timing of different developments. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, any further questions from council? If not, there is a recommendation uh, on page 15. Okay, have someone moved back, Councillor Hearn. And Councillor Davis, wish to speak, Councillor Hearn. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. No, Councillor, wish to speak. If not, that's in both. All those in favour? Against, that's carried. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. uh, item three is the 2020 2021 Community Sponsorships Program. Uh, thank you, councillors. Um, councillors, just a reminder, we do have a conflict of interest in relation to this one. Um, so we will uh, firstly do the Denial Sustainable Future Group application, and then we'll do the Women the Community House application as a second. So I'll hand it over to Tom. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, sorry. So yeah. just that mention of Minda. Yeah. So this is the first time is the analysis sound of the No worries, Tom. Uh, so the community sponsorship program enables community groups, clubs, organisations to seek funding to increase their capacity to work in partnership with uh, the council and others to address local needs and enhance the local community. Um, we allocate up to $500 to applicants um, each month. Um, so we have two applications in front of us today. Um, but at this point in time, we will uh, only talk about the Vanilla Sustainable Futures Group application, and they're seeking funding to support the Swanpool Environmental Film Festival 2021. Uh, the festival aims to present films on environmental issues, along with events, <coughs> providing an event, an event uh, which informs and educates the regional community. Yep. Yep. So the recommendation is to allocate uh, five hundred dollars uh, towards the Benalla Sustainable Futures Group. Thank you, Tom. Are there any questions from Council, Councillor Davis? No, no question. I'll move that. No questions. Okay, Councillor Davis is moving that. Second, to Councillor Garrett. Do you speak to Councillor Davis? Uh, I need to show that it's a, a very good group. They're uh, very active in the community. 
Um, for all intents and purposes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Councillor Gunnarine? No, thank you, Chair. Any other councillor wishes to speak? Is that to the vote? Those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Councillor Gunnarine, you would like to present yourself in the chamber? Thank you, Chair. And we now move to uh, the second application for Minda Community House. Uh, yes, so the second application for Minda Community House for their uh, Pro Youth Skill Up Your Life uh, program. Uh, it's a project that targets uh, disengaged youth aged between 16 and 24 and focuses on soft skill development um, such as cooking, uh, household budgeting, job preparedness and short training courses. And the recommendation is to provide $500 of community sponsorship funding towards their project. Thank you, Tom. No other questions, Councillor? I'm happy to move that in. Oh, okay. Are there any questions? questions? <coughs> no questions. Mm -hmm. Councillor Hearn moving up. Um, seconder, Councillor Farage. You used to speak, Councillor Hearn. Uh, just to say that that's a great incentive. The, um, that activity that they're going to give for them. Disengaged you. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Councillor Farage. Uh, no, I concur with uh, what Councillor Hearn has said. It's a great project and it's a great group. Thank you. No other Councillor wishes to speak. Let's have vote. Those in favour? And that is carried. Thank you. Would it? That's what I was going to say. I don't know if I'm going to introduce it. You've got to leave the room and make me. Right, can I come back to the paper? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gunnar, I just for your information that uh, one regarding the community, community has passed. Thank you. Uh, item 4 is the 2020 2021 annual grants program. And we'll go over to Tom Council before I do. I will just um, provide advice that there is a conflict of interest in relation to the application for Member Community House. Councillor Gunnar Rappers, so we will speak to each of the other applications with the exception of the Community Community House. Okay. Uh, uh, so this report uh, presents applications recommended for funding under the 2020-2021 annual grant program and the major event funding program. Uh, so the Community Grants program is an annual uh, funding uh, designed to encourage not for profit community based organisations to seek uh, funding for up to two and a half thousand dollars for projects and activities. Uh, also, under our annual grants program, we have a youth participation grants, uh, which provide young people to deliver youth led events uh, with funding of up to one thousand um, dollars. Council's major event funding program uh, provides uh, community groups, clubs, organisations, and external event groups to seek up to uh, $1,500 in funding to assist in staging events um, that will provide benefit to the Rural City. Uh, so in February 2021, uh, groups were invited to apply for the grants, um, and the grants were open between the 8th of February and the 26th of March, and were promoted through local media, um, network, community news, the website, and social media. Um, Within the Community Grants Program, we received uh, a number of applications totaling uh, just above $94,000 worth of uh, funding, uh, and the assessment panel uh, have recommended that 33 applications receive funding uh, through the program. Would you like to summarise your uh, so there's a, a wide variety of um, organisations being uh, recommended for funding um, from Nella Hockey through to a local scout group, Winton Cemetery Trust, uh, Thuma Hall Committee, um, Sustainable Futures Group. Um, yeah, so there's a, a really nice cross section of um, community groups and organisations that will be able to assist uh, through this funding. Uh, you'll find within the table. Um, the amount that they have requested and the amount of proposed assistance and uh, in almost all cases um, we've been able to provide um, the total amount. Of course that um, excludes those that were unsuccessful in their funding application and uh, were unable to receive any funds. Um, 
the youth participation grants we received three applications, uh, and we were able to provide funding for all of them, uh, not the full amount for a couple of them, uh, and that was just based off some of the things that the young people have put in their budget and had a chat and it was probably not something that they could include in the budget that had been highlighted within the guidelines that they'd missed. Uh, major event funding, we received five applications. Um, there's a total uh, funding pool of $12,000 available for our major event funding program. Uh, so there's a, a total allocation of $7,500 uh, for that particular program. Um, so the financial implications uh, to our annual grants budget allocates uh, $79,666,000. Uh, of which 64,666 is allocated to the community grants and youth participation grants, and the balance of that, uh, which is about 15,000, is directed towards our sponsorship grants. Uh, as mentioned, major event funding received 12,000. Um, it's proposed under this program that 6,321 um, dollars worth of funding be reallocated towards the community grant program from the community program uh, surplus budget or predicted surplus budget under community sponsorship due to um, smaller numbers of applications for the sponsorship program, particularly through the COVID period where many groups were unable to um, deliver projects. So um, using that additional funding uh, meant that we could get an extra couple of those grants that have been recommended um, across the line, whereas they would have missed out otherwise. Um, I'm happy to take on those recommendations. Thank you, Tom. Councillor Hearn. Um, I'd just like to ask, um, through the chair, if you could just briefly explain um, the 11 that have got no funding at all, could you just briefly explain why? Sure. Thank you. Sure. Um, if I was to start at the top, um, raise the roof. Um, so they're a group that had uh, put in a good application but have been very well supported by council previously and part of the way that we balance our decision is obviously making sure that we're sharing around our, um, our support. Um, exactly the same story for Benella District uh, Preschool. Uh, the Benella Saints uh, application was a little bit murky in that it was unclear whether they had already um, um, the Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club um, application um, wasn't strong and the quote that provided was um, the wrong quote. Uh, Vanilla Men's Shed didn't provide a quote at all. Um, the Sports and Entertainment Centre uh, had no quote either and no detail on exactly what they wanted to do so we couldn't be confident that um, we were fun what we were funding. Uh, the Lions Club were ineligible. Uh, the Balloon Association for the LPG tank, a uh, very big project to do something like that at the airport. Uh, and for us to have confidence in funding the installation of an LPG <coughs> tank at an airport would require a lot more detail than was provided. And we had worked with them in last year's grant round when they um, had applied and provided that feedback. Um, they'd been talking with uh, Greg Robertson as well around that. Um, so. We tried our best. Sports and Entertainment Centre, they have a good profit, so I was getting the bus for one and that might have confused. So, um, that's, yeah, so that's why the Sports and Entertainment one wasn't funded, and the basketball one was the one that didn't have okay, good detail for what they wanted to do. Uh, the Vanilla Netball, uh, the weather shelters um, was a poor application without sufficient detail as well. Uh, and the Moira Vanilla Club um, were applying for um, the painting and um, the plumbing fittings, and we have funded them uh, <coughs> multiple times for refurbishment for the for the club. Um, similar to other applicants, you know, we felt like it was time to give some of the newer applicants some funding, so that's why they weren't successful. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's the days. Just to follow up to Tom. Um, well done. It must be hard to so getting better every year that you've got a source and go through. Um, and I just like what you've mentioned now. Will that be sent in a letter form or to two, or will you be sitting down talking to these groups so that we um, 
So to, to give them encouragement to apply again next year? Yeah, please? certainly every every year that uh, we do this, or certainly while I'm involved in the program, it's about continuous improvement and that is not uh, limited to how we manage it, but it's also to upskill our community so that they're putting in better grant applications, not only to us, but to state, federal bodies, whoever it might be. Um, so yeah, we certainly, I put the, um, the word out there that if they would like to catch up and get some feedback on why they were unsuccessful, um, yeah, my door's always open for that conversation. Thanks very much. Because they do, um, they do call on the councillors at times, and it's good to, to have someone to refer them to. Yeah, no, certainly. As soon as um, you know, all of these decisions are um, adopted, the emails go out to say we were successful or unsuccessful, and if you would like some feedback, I'm, I'm more than happy to you know, go through your application and, and help you out. And also, when we start opening it up again next year, feedback, you know, without identifying specifics or specific organisers that highlight what some of the issues are that, that create an unsuccessful application and things to avoid. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that is. Any other questions from Council? Councillor Farage? Just, um, the Warren Bain Recreation Reserve on page 24 from the bottom, maybe it would be a good idea to request that they rename their project. Yeah, it's interesting. We're learning, uh, so this is all through the Smarty Grants program. So when they fill in the little box that says title of your project, it gets spat out in a report like this. Um, so there might be a little bit of a heads up that what you pop in your report might appear in a council report. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mind you, they might think that's quite amusing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there are no further questions from Council, there is a recommendation on page 24, with the exception of uh, the Women and Community House item. To the, Mr. Chair, to change that um, figure to 68,487, taking out the 2,500 for the window. So that's an amendment to the recommendation. Councillor, wish to move that recommendation. Councillor Hearn, Councillor Gunnarani. Mr. Speaker, Councillor Hearn. I'd just like to say that it's wonderful to be able to help so many community groups. Um, and also, it's sad that we have 11 that um, haven't got any money, but once they get their grant applications correct, I'm sure that we'll see, see fit to do things in the future. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, follow, follow up from uh, Councillor Hearn, I agree, but also uh, good work, the team, community uh, grant program, I'm sure got... Uh, Flood with applications and a lot of work to go through this. Great work and to support the community and encourage this community spirit in our town. And in the future, whoever who missed out, uh, it's sad to see that, but it's a good idea to engage with our staff and they're always willing to help in the future for the application and follow the guidelines and uh, fit into the process. Definitely happy to help in the future, I'm sure. And thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other Councillor wish to speak? No, we'll put that to the vote, but all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Um, now the item number that we have extracted is the Wamunda Community House. Councillor Gunnarecki, you have a conflict of interest? Yes, thank you. Okay, Chamber. Thanks, Tom. Okay, uh, um, so yes, uh, Wamunda. Sorry. Uh, yes, on top of page 21, uh, have submitted a request for $2,500 for their Art and Gardens Community Engagement Project, uh, which is recommended for full funding of $2,500. Thank you, Tom. Uh, questions from Council? Councillor Hearn, Councillor Gunnarecki, Councillor Farage? Yeah, just to speak, Councillor Gunnarecki. Um, oh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, just to say that this is also just an indicator of um, to be included with all of the diverse groups and interests within the community. I think this is great. We've been able to come so many so Well done. Thank you. Yes. I think it's a great project, and uh, Benalla West needs Artful Garden, so it should be money well spent. Any other councillor wish to speak? If not, that's a vote. All those in favour? Carried. Thank you. Councillor Gunnar, I'll back. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you, Gunnar. Just for your information, uh, that recommendation for me. Uh, 
Thank you. Pass this pass. Thank you, Chair. Item five is the community plan implementation steering committee terms of the reference. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the report actually presents the consideration of revised community plan implementation steering committee terms of reference, which the committee spoke about at their meeting in February. So I will draw your attention to the changes which are best seen on pages four and five of the attachment. Um, you can see item seven point one. Um, the idea there was that they wanted to make it so that either a councillor or a community member could share the committee, and it could also um, act as a liaison person between the committee and the community, taking out the need for uh, conflict of interest with council business. And 7.3 was actually also changed so that it could either be a community or a council representative sitting in as a deputy chair, um, and that in this case they would act as a liaison between the committee and council, because at, at the meeting they actually nominated a community chair and a councillor as a deputy chair, so hence those changes. But what they also wanted to make sure was that a community representative wouldn't actually hold both positions, nor a councillor representative hold both positions so that there was both a community representative and a councillor representative. Um, the other items that they wanted to um, make changes with was actually making sure that the committee investigated ways of getting information out to the community on progress um, made against the community plan and they also wanted the chairperson to have the option to call additional meetings and in fact um, the group in theory was meeting just quarterly because there were new members and so forth and we had to actually uh, meet monthly over the first um, few meetings to enable the group all to be up to speed. So I just draw your attention to the recommendation on page 26. Thank you, Jim. Are there any questions from the council? There are no questions. There is a recommendation on page 26. I've got someone move that recommendation. Councillor O'Brien, Councillor Firth. No, I think it's um, yes, I do thank you. Um, to the chair. Uh, just to say that yeah, it's been a really good discussion, I think, within that group to make those changes. So well done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Perth? No. Now the councillor wish to speak. No. That's a vote. Was in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, item six is the community activity report for the quarter end of 31 March 2021. Okay. Right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will just highlight a few items because I know it's a long meeting. Um, I just wanted to highlight the fact that our rural outreach worker has supported 63 community members over the quarter. Um, bearing in mind that he was on leave over January, so this really was presented for February to March uh, reporting period. Um, it was and you will note that this is actually less than he had been uh, seeing over COVID because, of course, he was making lots of phone calls. So he was actually able to get back out into the community. Um, and I think uh, the Rural Outreach Worker Reference Group has continued to meet and they've been very active in helping plan for uh, some of the upcoming mental health events. And you would, some of you did actually come to the Happy Sad Man screenings uh, that were screened at that week last week. So thank you for the support there. Um, so going over to um, youth events on page 28, over the quarter there have been a, a number of youth events. Um, it's really pleasing to know that these events can start to happen again um, because, of course, it was severely restricted during the uh, COVID um, lockdowns and so forth. Um, the one that was particularly, I think some of those pictures highlight um, you know, some of the activities, but certainly uh, the um, Australia Day event actually attracted about 120 people. People. Um, that was held uh, over in the gardens, so that was um, really well done to the team. And of course, you can see uh, the pictures there from the Youth for Life launch that was held for the P12 College. Um, the launches this year had to be separated between the schools, and also there was some um, really successful um, art workshop held over at Wunyinga as part of their um, all art. So it's lovely. And actually what is coming up too is the 10 year celebration of the LGP program. Um, mm -hmm. That's very exciting that that um, has been operating in Vanilla for 10 years. And although the program numbers are down a little bit, 
again due to COVID, um, numbers have started to uh, come up again, uh, which is fantastic. That program has always been one that's been very popular and it's been one where um, Benalla in particular has been recognised for the great work that we've done. Um, with maternal and child health and family services and also our age to disability services, we are resuming mainly face-to-face -face services. Um, it is pleasing to note that we've added a third supported play group, um, which is really targeting young mothers um, or young parents, um, and that's, that's been well supported. Um, the other things that I would perhaps highlight on page 30 is that we were successful in securing some growth funding um, to allow us to do uh, more home modifications. Um, and what was pleasing with that, although we weren't successful in getting um, any further domestic assistance support, um, we are now able to actually help people um, cover some of the costs of materials which we haven't been able to do before. Um, so that's very pleasing. Um, the other one that um, the Age Friendly Vanilla Steering Committee has resumed monthly meetings. They're a very active group of older people and uh, they contribute regular article funding, as you would know, to the Vanilla Ensign, which they've been doing for some time. They do that off their own bat. Um, but what they're wanting to pilot um, at the library um, between July and December is an info hub. They're calling it an Age Well in Vanilla Info Hub. And that's in response to when we did our Age and Disability Services Review and when we did our Age and Vanilla Strategy, that many people were saying they weren't actually aware of all the services and activities that were available for older people. So we're hoping that um, we're going to actually skill up some volunteers, that we, it will be about 10 volunteers who will start at one morning a week. Um, obviously, uh, referring people on when necessary, so it will be just an opportunity for people to know more about all the things that um, are available in our community. Um, the highlight, um, for us, which was also a low light too, because the work involved in preparing for a maintenance audit, as many of you would know, um, is very onerous on staff and quite demanding. Um, but we were successful in securing um, <coughs> uh, our maintenance um, audit was successful, which is terrific. Um, with only one minor breach, which we were able to rectify. Um, so that was really, and, and what was good about that too is the auditor, and it was all done online, which let me tell you was quite challenging as well, particularly when the system went down. Um, so that um, was a challenge, but uh, the auditor was able to give us really positive feedback because part of what they do to the audit is they talk to a number of stakeholders. So that's some of our clients and uh, some of the um, community organisations and so forth that we work with. So they work very positively with regards to that. Um, just looking at the budget, you can see, as Kathy was alluded to before, we do have um, quite a, a number of uh, programs that um, really are underspent. Um, this is mainly due to timing variations in when our grants are paid, but also the fact that because of COVID, we haven't been able to expend funds in a number of our programs. So I'll just draw your attention to uh, the recommendation on the HD and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, John. Are there any questions from the council? No, it's just well. Is there a councillor wishing to move the recommendation? Councillor Gunnar, not Councillor Hearn. Wish to speak to Councillor Gunnar? No, thank you, Chair. Councillor Hearn? Mm -hmm. No, Councillor wishes to speak. Councillor Gunnar. Yeah, I'll say something. Um, through your department, John, there's certainly plenty going on. And it must be difficult to keep up with it at the times. Well done, thank you. Councillor Davis, no, I think that's Councillor Davis has said it well. There's a lot happening and it's been a very challenging with 12 months, but it's good to see things are bouncing back and the community's engaged, so thank you. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Jane. Uh, item 7 is Business Development Activity Report for the quarter and 31 March 2021. Oh. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I will take the report largely as printed, but happy to field any questions from the Thank you, John. Any questions from Council in regards to this report? No questions? Uh, recommendation? Uh, no, no, no. Well, Councillor Farage. The um, 
the broadband. Can you tell us how that is done? Yes, uh, just through the chair. We have had a series of uh, committee meetings. Uh, the work on that um, will commence soon. Uh, it's looking very positive, actually. Um, in recent weeks, Bendigo Telecom uh, show interest in potentially partnering in the project as well, which uh, is a very positive sign uh, for the project. So our intention is to um, uh, essentially do a test of the, uh, of the theory of the 10 gigabyte network in the, in the town uh, through June, July, and August, um, prove that the concept works, and uh, work on uh, potential uh, people who'd like to sign up for that uh, speed internet. I think the most critical thing in that is people actually don't fully understand what can be achieved when you're talking about uh, what um, a 10 gigabyte asymmetrical system can allow you to do. Here at the council, we have 400 megabytes up and down. We're talking potentially 10 gigabytes, which is then 25 times greater than what we've currently got. So it'll be an interesting trial. Uh, one of those sites we are looking to do uh, a few throughout town. Um, but we also are looking at doing, let's call it a come and try um, down Main Street as well. So we can invite people to come in and actually have two computers side by side. This is your standard um, central NBA, and this is what the 10 gigabyte system can actually do for people. So um, moving along quite well at this particular point in time. Thank you. Councillor Perth. Uh, yeah, this is probably to the CEO. Regarding the housing um, issue, which is becoming an urgent issue. Is there anything on the horizon that we might be able to, I know with some government assistance and so forth, because it really is becoming a real issue for people there to be able to rent anywhere. Uh, and I would imagine that some of the low income people are finding it almost ridiculous and difficult. Yeah, through the chair, it's a, uh, it's, it's a huge issue for Benalla, but um, it's a massive issue for North East Victoria <coughs> um, and the other regional cities and towns are actually experiencing the same. Same scenario as what we've got here, but you can see the figures in the report, you know, number one for rental increases, 26% house price increases uh, three or four years ago was the complete opposite. So for a small rural town to be able to react very quickly to address that, it's almost impossible. Um, I'm happy to share with the council, actually, uh, post the meeting and we'll take it on notice. We have, um, all the councils in the North East um, have actually, or are supporting the submission to the government, uh, which t and &E is looking towards this, the uh, Tourism to North East, specifically looking at housing issues, um, of what can be done, uh, or, uh, what models might be able to be implemented in town, such as, you know, in Benalla and obviously the Snowfields and Alpine and Wayne Grader, etc. So I'm happy to share that information with the council. Um, we continue to advocate at every chance we do get, but it is a very, very difficult um, issue to deal with um, at the moment, as council is aware. A lot of housing developments are going on, and houses are being, you know, constructed as quick as they can, but it's just not enough to meet the demand that is currently out there. So um, very acutely aware of what the issues are, but. The, uh, the problems are that easy. So we'll continue to work on it. Follow up question, Councillor? Yeah, it, it's, it's, I suppose the question is whether or not uh, through your contacts. Um, I was uh, talking to one of the uh, developers of the old one, uh, estate developers, and he, he mentioned to me just in passing that. Um, Victoria only had six engineer, uh, what did he call them, uh, plans, land surveyors, actually graduate in Victoria last year. That in itself um, must be going to create a huge problem for the future with regards to seeing that land surveyors are so important for new developments. <laughs> Is that being discussed with, within the northeast CEOs and so forth. Yeah, yeah through the chair, it's uh, it's not only sort of that skill set. Um, you know, it's NBS municipal building surveyors, it's planners, it's building surveyors. It's the whole range of skill sets that there just aren't enough out there. Um, Sarah Ford, who works for us, we're actually educating her at the moment. She's on a 
way to becoming an MBS. Uh, so we're supporting her through that journey because for um, for councils in most of regional Australia, it's almost impossible to try and attract you know an MBS. If you don't have an MBS, we don't have a service. We just cannot actually deliver the service to our community. So we're very fortunate that we've actually got, uh, been able to partner or work with neighbouring councils in the past. We've got contracted out at the moment to help us through that journey. But uh, that whole skill set, there's a shortage. Um, but at the moment, what's in front of us is really just, we've got the housing developments, we've got the houses being developed, but you can just see in the not too distant future, there's something going to break. And it's that skill set as people start to retire. And I think it was today, um, I think we received a phone call that was, are you guys going to be in a position to do this because in two years' time we're going to need this? And this was from a neighbouring council. So we are talking about future proofing and succession planning. So it's a huge problem. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Until I telecommunications on page, if we look at Gurumbet, 10 to 12 k's out of Penella, we haven't got a mobile phone service, um, which today, that's just ridiculous in 2021. What, can we keep shaking the tree? We need to seriously represent the people out there. It's obviously poli politics at a high level, obviously they're not doing any good, so do we need to do something at our level? Uh, through the chair, um, we do shake the tree pretty vigorously quite a lot of times. Um, I think the most disappointing thing in this particular uh, application was the quantum of money that Neon was prepared to kick into the project and it was still not granted. Um, so they actually supported a number of number of letters of support. Obviously the council continued to support it. Catherine did a tremendous amount of work on uh, the background discussions and the lead up to it all. Uh, the Gurumbat people the call committee had a meeting out there in the Angels there, a number of councils I think were there as well. In the end I think it came down to an official map showed that there was coverage. Yes, some yeah. yeah, and that couldn't break through that. But having said that, um, that is one area, especially with the development that's happening there and the tourism out there, and it's a very, very proactive community. It just it needs a tower. So we'll continue to advocate very strongly for that. Thank you. Yes, the uh, any other questions from council? If not, the recommendation is bottom page 41. Council will move that council first. Seconder. Councillor Gunnardi, Councillor Yes, uh, Chair, thank you. Um, I think there are questions about the housing issue and the rental issue. And we know there are people, uh, quite a large percentage of people living under $500 a week income in Bella. And also the job keeper payments stopped on 28 March and there will be some impacts. I think we need to note that in our decisions and acknowledge that there are Quite a number of people in our rural city that have these issues and the financial problems. Uh, it's a good report and discussing about opportunities as well and also highlighting the challenges we have as a rural city. Got to deal with and keep it in our mind. The forefront. Thank you. Any other council wish to speak? If not, for that to vote, all those in favour, that's carried. Uh, item 8 is Finance Department Activity Report for the quarter end of 31 March. Kathy. Thank you. Um, I'll just highlight a few items um, in my report as well. Uh, the investments held at the 31st of March uh, are a large number of 17 million. Uh, the rates of return are low interest rate returns, but um, we anticipate using uh, quite a bit of that cash with our capital program over the next couple of months. Um, and we have been carefully investing to try and get the best rates that are, are available. Um, we will keep an eye on the market and continue to ensure that we pay our terms 30 days or better for locals wherever we can. And at the moment we're able to do that, which I'm pleased to say. The rates and charges revenue, uh, we were reviewing it again today with the last instalment due at the end of May and we're closely monitoring just how our community is going to go with the JobKeeper reduction. Um, 
across. It is having a little bit of council decision not to do that until the 30th of June. And you'll see in Appendix 2 that there's no current interest raised in the current year, which um, has been benefiting a number of people who are on payment plans. And the community is continuing to ring and talk about the payment plans, which is a really good thing. With our um, instalment notices, we're also highlighting again that can you please contact us if you're having difficulties so that they know that they haven't got a large bill that they just keep seeing coming. We anticipate at the end of June that we will commence charging interest again in the new year, but um, we are trying to contact as many people out there that have issues and people are making weekly, fortnightly, monthly payments as, as they can. So um, we'll continue to monitor that, but the impact may be at the end of June we'll We'll see just how, how much of an increase we have in our spend rates. The um, sale of a number of properties in the community that have been um, long-term outstanding rates has also helped the process. In, in settlement in Banala, people normally settle the entire amount of the rates that's outstanding to go on to the next person. So we've picked up a number of issue properties that have been addressed, which is is good for both the ratepayer and, and for the council, which is good. So we'll keep you in for On page 47, one of the, I, I also look after, and um, each quarter we report on the statistical data for rural road numbers and um, items that interest me when I look at what they're doing. But this month I'd like to highlight that that we have mapped the council street and park trees, a massive task, um, and we have an overlay that shows all the trees. There, were, there was a data capture undertaken in 2020 and it's accessible. It's used by parks and gardens. It's great if we have a storm event or um, need to review what sort of species are here. And we continue to think that this will be a really useful tool. It's amazing what modern technology can do. Um, and when you're planning for your tree pruning or just to see what, what trees are out there, if there's been damage to a tree, and what data we have on it. Um, so I'm happy to say that Dean, our Parks and Gardens supervisor, um, is very keen on the new overlay and there was a lot of hours gone into um, getting the data in. But just the little picture in the on that page 47 representing. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm happy to take any questions. Any questions for Council Councillor Claridge? Uh, yeah, Council, just you mentioned um, overdue back rates that are being collected. Those back rates what sit on the title of the house and then if it's sold, that comes out of the settlement, is that correct? Yeah. And, and there have been a, a number that have moved, which um, is, is good for the ratepayer um, as well because they're settling up in outstanding debts which is great that some of our um, arrears from prior years have, have been um, paid off, which is what appears in Appendix 2, that there's been quite a number of items settled and, and some of the interest um, that has been going for a number of years. Given that we're not currently um, charging interest, we've collected a bit of debt management issues with the old ones. We don't like to go and sell properties up. So it's good when they've um, had the opportunity to, to liquidate their cash. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Katie, my question is from the table one on page 44, investments held at March 31st. Mm -hmm. um, I know the interest rates aren't great, but looking at that operating at call, quite 30 million there, um, I thought it's a quite a large balance without any income in it. Just depends when the um, Victorian Grants Commission payments pop into the account, mm -hmm. um, and and we can have quite a lot going out at the end of the quarter, and also a lot of the community services portal payments pop in at the end of the month. So it's hard to sweep it clear, and and um, we try and package it. Our last um, package we went for over a million dollars, and and we picked up the rate you'll see in the the NAB. Um, 1.5 million that we invested, it, it's at a higher rate. So if we can gather the 
the funds together with our cash flow and it's over a million dollars, we open ourselves up to much better rates than if we're doing small bundles underneath. So that's our um, approach at the moment to try and get the best bang for our buck. But it also means that um, we've pushed it over 184, whereas our policy was to be only 180. Yeah. And so with the last council adoption of the um, investment policy, we're now bundling it to be the most attractive that we can get. Good Thank pick you. up though. Thank you. 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 Kathy, um, you might want to take this one and notice on page 45 under procurement, mm -hmm. the Motor Vehicle Fleet Management Administration Policy and Procedures Review completed. Uh, are, there, are, there savings, are there savings to be made in that, um, in that procedure there? Uh, we go through the operation of it. Uh, we look at how we procure vehicles where... where um, having issues with the supply, give us advice of when you need to change a vehicle and the specifics because it can take between three and six months at the moment. Um, there's not a lot of saving in the motor vehicle fleet management um, policy. It's just the procedural process at the moment. Just procedural at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dex. Uh, there are any other questions of Cathy from Council? If you're not, the recommendation is page 48. I think that's someone moves that, Councillor Hearn. And the second is a clarity. Could you speak, Councillor Hearn? Uh, just to say that it's a good report. Thanks, Councillor. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. Uh, item nine is people and performance activity report for quarter end 31 in March. Welcome to me. Thank you, Mr. Um, the report presents the activities of the people and performance department for the quarter end of 31st of March. Um, I'll just highlight three or four areas, um, starting in the customer relations area. Um, they've been very busy there in that quarter. We've commenced a new accessible parking permit scheme, which replaces our disabled person's parking scheme. Um, the more simplified process, rather than the paper-based um, process that we went through before, completes the form online appointment an appointment with their medical practitioner um, who they provide that reference number to online and the permit is issued. They can pick it up from council or it can be posted out to them. Um, I think we've got about approximately 900 permits that are issued. Um, the customer relations staff have also been really proactive through this process. Um, and they've been assisting uh, maybe computer access or aren't so confident in using a computer. They'll come in and the customer relations staff will take them into a meeting room with a laptop and an application and fill it out with them. So that's been quite successful, but a lot of work to date. Um, also, they've commenced with our new after hours call service provider, Oracle, positive about this service. Um, working with them, Oracle have a very detailed service matrix which shows all the escalations throughout every department and council. So there was a lot of work done towards the preparation for the service matrix prior to going live. The customer, customer relations coordinator worked with Oracle and every department to gather as much detail as possible to include in the matrix. So it's made it... Um, quite and argue to answer a lot of those after hours calls um, without referring back to an officer. However, if they're unable to answer the query, then it can be passed back to a duty officer. Um, moving on to page 50, um, I'll just highlight under human resources. Um, human resources coordinator is continu continuing the work with the Victorian, uh, working for Victoria program. Um, to date, we've recruited approximately 12 staff under this program, and it has been really rewarding because we have engaged some really excellent people for these roles. So we're currently still in the process of recruiting for the last six or seven positions. Um, I'll also move to page 52 and go through the statistics. 
statistics for volunteer development. Um, our volunteers, as at the end of March, we've got 240 active. We've got 180 not active. Um, current total of 420. Now the before COVID, the December 2019 total was 468. So the Volunteer Development Coordinator is busy at the moment planning um, for the ceremony for the volunteers who have reached milestones as part of National Volunteer Week. Um, the volunteers, approximately 106 invitations have gone out to these volunteers, quite a nice glass trophy to their efforts. And there's also being um, morning tea, afternoon teas organised for all the other individual groups that won't be part of this ceremony. Um, I'd like to take you to page 55, the recommendation that the report be noted. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a question. It's from Council. Councillor <coughs> Yeah, Cathy, um, getting back to our... Janine. Janine. Sorry? Janine, Janine, Janine report. <laughs> it's all right, I, I'm, I'm large. <laughs> you said Kathy, Danny, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Janine. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly, Oracle, do we track things like how long Oracle takes to answer your phone and yeah, what action they take? Um, through you, Mr Chair. I believe we do. Um, that's that's an area that the Customer Relations Coordinator looks after and I can report back to you. Um, I know that they receive a report, email report every day to say how many after hours calls they've had for that day. Yes, but the reporting is, I believe, a lot more efficient than the old provider. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr Farage. Any questions from the Council? That's fine. Oh, welcome to me. Just, just curious, uh, can you give us a rough idea on um, page 50, the uh, Working Victoria program, what are those positions that are still waiting to be filled? Through, just you, rough. Um, through you, Mr Chair, I'm sorry, I'll have to provide that on notice because I didn't bring that list. Oh, that's all right. No worries, thank you. Uh, any other questions? I have one more. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, just wondered what the date for the um, National Volunteers Week is. 17th to the 21st of May. Thank you. And the function will be on the 19th of May. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks a lot, Beth. Yeah, Janine. The The people that we have been able to uh, employ, are they primarily from local, the local area? Uh, I, I asked the question because I've met two of them and they're both local, so I'm just wondering whether or not the rest. Yes. That's true, Mr. Um, most of them are. They're Wangaratta, Shepparton, Regional. Okay, so there are some from Melbourne. Okay. Also, it's a bit of a mixed match. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, any other questions from Council? Uh, recommendation is on page 55. I'm going to move that recommendation. Councillor Davis and Councillor Gandhi. Do you suspect Councillor Davis? Only just to say it's another really good report from your department. And there's certainly plenty going on. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And it's also good to see 35 new people coming on, on strike. So that's creating a lot more work to uh, has to be processed. Well done. I'd just like to um, congratulate the effort that's going into the volunteers. We have a lot of volunteers. You just see that they're recognised, who is fantastic. Yeah, right. Any other councillor wish to speak? I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour? Thanks, Gary. <coughs> Thank you. It is councillors' expenses for quarter and 31 March 2021. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, recommendation, bottom of page 58. Any questions from the councillors? No questions? Recommendation.
recommendation. Councillor Firth has moved in there. Councillor Gunnarani has second. Mr. Speaker, Councillor Firth. No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Councillor Gunnarani. Uh, no, thank you, Jack. And 31 March 2021. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm disappointed I actually used it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't press my bill card. Yeah, a question through the chair. Is, is the CEO got a new card yet, or has he, had the situ has he had the problem uh, revving it? Yes, Councillor, it has been reissued. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. That's a question. Uh, any other councillors? Oh, no, thank you. Happy to move the recommendation. Happy to move the recommendation. Yes, so Ryan second. Councillor Gardner. Happy to move. Thank you. Never miss an opportunity. Oh, it's a good Tesla. Thank you, Councillor O'Brien. Yes, I think that's a great idea. Thank you very much. Councillor Gardner, wish to speak regarding that item. If not, so that's a vote for us in favour. Thank you. Item 12 is Councillor and staff to interact with you. Interaction policy. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as previously discussed, councillors, uh, we have uh, this particular policy has been enforced by the leadership team. Uh, the policy is attached to all the councillors' information. Happy to take any questions, otherwise, the recommendation of page 61. Are there any questions from <laughs> Mr. Mr. Chair? Can I just add one point? Um, this, is, um, this draft one following the leadership team um, review. Just in regard to councillors contacting the help desk, the IT help desk, and it just puts in the policy that councillors can contact the help desk and direct your restrictions on that. Questions? Councillor Hope? I'm happy to move it. Happy to move the recommendation. Councillor Hope moving it. Seconded, Councillor Clary. Wish to speak. Councillor Hope, thank you. Councillor Clary? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Chair. Any yeah, other councillor wish to speak? Please vote, please vote. Thank you. Item 13 is procurement policy review. Kathy? Thank you. Um, the procurement policy needs to be reviewed each financial year. So annually, it can be on the 1st of July and it can be on the 30th of June of the next year. It just needs to be in the financial year. The current policy was um, adopted back 9th of October uh, and it's to be reviewed in October 2020. We were waiting for the um, 2020 Act to come in. Um, but I need to have the policy adopted in the current financial year and with the new Act, it needs to be reviewed by January. So it may seem terribly pedantic that we're reviewing and not changing policy at the moment, but we intend to do the full review in the new financial year, 1st of July, um, in that period to be compliant with the Act. So I'm happy to take any questions on the policy, but I just wanted to, you to understand why the time frame seemed to be... Appearing like that. Thank you, Kathy. Any questions of Kathy from Council? No questions? Council Home moving the recommendation. Second, Council of Firth wishes to speak. Council of Home? No, thank you. Council of Firth? No. No other Council wishes to speak. All those in favour? That's Harry. Thank you. And we will declare moving five. 